Hi there, everyone. This is Chess Coach Aaron, and we're here to do five more positions. And I'm doing one or two of these every week. It's kind of a thing that I've been enjoying, and I hope you guys have been enjoying it too. Um, many times the positions are puzzles or certain hard positions, maybe middle game position or other types of things, other types of themes. Um, this video's theme is going to be for chess kid puzzles. All of our students we work with, we ask them to do chess kid puzzles every week and to get 50 correct minimum if you do more great but 50 correct puzzles and chess kit is awesome um it keeps track of your rating and the more you do correct the higher rating goes the harder the puzzles get and i think the puzzles are very good you got to stay focused so i figured um maybe you guys would kind of get a kick out of seeing coach aaron doing the puzzles and seeing which ones i actually got wrong um I'm not a grandmaster, <laughs> but I do love doing the puzzles. I'm a rusty, what they call national master, right? I got my rating at one point high enough, and I got the title national master hundreds of years ago. <laughs> and um, But I love to focus on a position. I really think I can understand most positions if I take my time. But that being said, still get some of these puzzles wrong. I thought it would help both myself and you guys to see what was I thinking when I did the puzzles wrong. So we're going to do five chess kid positions. And we're going to see how, uh, you know, the right way to have done them and see how we were thinking we did them wrong. You can see at the bottom here, I put down my first 50 correct. We're in 51 attempts, so I actually got one wrong. And my rating after that was 1987. The second time, the second set of 50, I was actually up to 111 attempts, even though I got 100, you know, 50 correct. But I was up to 100 correct at that point, and I had a rating of 2358. Figure I'll do this every so often. You guys can kind of see where I'm progressing, and we can work on what um, puzzles are done wrong and why. All right, so chess kit. Let's get to that page real quick because I want to show you something. And you'll notice... And once you log into your chess kit account, and here I am, Coach Aaron, you're at your home page, you go to puzzles. And on the puzzles page, you can just start them. You can look at the old ones. You can look at the positions you got right. And we're going to go over this one. I did not get this one totally correct. Very interesting position. But as you scroll down, you'll also notice before you start your puzzles, you'll have your rating number solved correctly and your attempts. Notice I'm up to 100 even. Many of the students say they're not sure how many they did or why they didn't get to 50 correct every week. Well, right here, if you go into your home page, one more time, click home page, puzzles, and before you start your puzzles on the side here to the right, you have your rating, number solved, and attempted, so you can keep track. The next batch I'll do, my solve will get to 150, 50 per week. So it's pretty straightforward for that. All right, let's get to the first puzzle. Let's get a little work done. And I will say there are a couple times, here's position number one, where I'm going to say pause. And I actually have a new little pause sign. So when I raise this up, you should pause the video and try your best to solve it yourself. But a couple of these positions out of the five are actually very embarrassing for me. But I'm still going to show them. This shows you how chess thinkers, you know, you're working and what you do right or wrong. All right, let's just adjust the screen real quick for a moment. Whoop. All right, much better. We can see the whole screen properly. And you'll notice whenever you see a new position, you're taking a look at real quick the differences. And here, same number of pawns. Bishop for a rook is the main difference. And our king, the white king, because it's white to move and play, is actually somewhat safe. We have this bishop kind of helping with the windiness. Their king, not so much. So I'm trying to look for candidate moves real quick. And I noticed their king, again, is not that safe. But... Can I actually move my queen to a dark square to get closer to their king? Right now, we have some good activity. We're covering a lot of squares, right, near the king. But the bishop and rook by itself are not going to do the job to finish this game. So I kind of need the queen to be involved, too. And again, these dark squares are not going to help. But on the other hand, if I can get to a light square, notice now suddenly if my queen can get to b5, I'm kind of infiltrating, and between this bishop and maybe the queen, if I can get there, plus the rook, perhaps I have a winning moment here. So I didn't see any forcing checks, because we're always looking for that first. And this was in the first 50 puzzles I did, so this already was starting to get a little more positional than tactics. So real quick, I said to myself, all right, I want to get to a light square. 
What is wrong with d3? Well, if I go to d3, I'm definitely threatening getting this queen over to b5 check. And I think this actually might be winning at this point already because we're infiltrating the position. These three major pieces are all to the side of this king. So if I can get to the king with a check over here, we're doing pretty good. And I realized if their king goes to c6, I have this beautiful check over here. And again, I think we're infiltrating, right? Because we can go checkers and when the king drops back we're doing pretty good if it goes to uh, d7 we have check over here and if it goes to c7 or b7 we have check over here and i forgot this is, has to be winning this has to be correct so put in my answer queen d3 just makes sense and it's actually wrong so can you guys find the correct move i'm gonna give you guys three seconds boo 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 doo doo boo Boop, 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 boop. Okay. <laughs> and the correct answer is actually very similar, but with one key difference. The correct move is queen to e2. Again, whoops. Well, let's put this king where it belongs. Um, in this position, we are still threatening getting our queen to b5, which is fantastic. And we still can go to e4 when they play or if they play king c6. But there's a huge difference here, huge difference. Number one, with this battery already set up, now we have an extra threat while my queen covers this escape square for the king. For example, if they go king to c6, which is what I expected in the other line when I was on d3, I was thinking I would go here for check on e4, which is really not bad, but it's not forcing. Here, we actually go forward with our battery, this works protected, and we say check. Notice there is no possibility of king going to b5 and escaping that. And again, when they back up, boop, boop, we have this check here, which is basically just winning. So notice, this is a big difference. If my queen was here, whoop, on uh, d3, I don't have this rook check. This is not a safe check over here. And once I go this way to check, they have this square. So you can see my thinking. Maybe I should have double checked. And I was trying to play in the light squares. Sometimes that happens. But keeping the battery together, keeping this battery of the rook and queen while still accomplishing getting onto the light squares, definitely was the winning combination. All right, let's go to puzzle number two. All right, this is an embarrassing one. And this is real quick and short. So we're even going to pause it now. Wait to move and win. One, ba -doop -doop, two, ba -doop -doop, three. All right, did you find it? And this happens to a lot of chess players. You see the quick move, you think you double check it, you really don't, and you play it. So this is pretty straightforward. The knight is not protected. I get a check in and snack, win the knight. So that seems like a pretty easy way. And I double checked that after the check and I get the knight. Is there any tricks? But I didn't check long enough. I just figured my queen would be on d5 protecting a bishop. Everything's good. And when they block with their bishop, it's one versus one. Protected. Boom. I didn't pay enough attention. I didn't double check correctly. So check. They save their king. I win the knight. But the big difference is they actually have this check here. There's windiness. And now they have two attackers and they just get their piece back. And if anything, they're up some pawns. So this is actually, or at least one pawn. So this is not the winning line for white. So... Let's back it up. And yes, this is very embarrassing because this is pretty straightforward. This is this is something everyone, if they pay attention to and take the time, should get this every time. So check. They have to block. And yes, the knight is hanging. But we have it in between another check. Check. And we're trading bishops. There's no bishop hanging out on b5 anymore. They capture. We win that knight. And now there's no bishop hanging. There's no checks available to get a piece back so we just want a piece all right that was very embarrassing let's go to position number three ah this is a very interesting position and you'll see what i was thinking real quick so again we always assess the position we see the differences it's a very blocked position and first thing i noticed was that this rook might be trapped but white does not have a dark squared bishop uh to go and attack it or if they try to move the knight to go and get it which looks like something in the long range maybe they can do well number one i have uh, or black has whoops this battery here so the second knight moves this battery just win this bishop on b3 right 
through the night. Right now, the night is separating this battery. The rook's communication doesn't work. So even if they move the knight, I could win the bishop. And in emergencies, I still could just remove the knight. So I realized this rook is actually very strong here. All right, that's the first thing. Next, I looked for, is there any big weaknesses in black's position? Is there something white's going to do? And I couldn't find any true threats for white. I did look a lot at perhaps this pawn going forward. And there's a lot of perhaps tricks here. There's maybe a check or a queen over here. And if they take, there might be some stuff. But I didn't see anything winning. And white is up a pawn, so they don't want to give up this pawn. Now... The big weakness in black's position is if they could get this battery, this light squared battery, this would be winning. But this is actually very hard to accomplish because right now this king has to protect the bishop, right? It's being threatened. And the king can't move away because of that. And if it goes to any dark squares by accident, right now I already have checks and their queen is hanging. That being said, again, the king can't really move. Vroom. Whoops. So this is a big strength for black. But this knight is kind of jamming up all the works. And since this is the move I looked at the most for white, I figured the main reason why it might work, or at least mix it up, is simply because this knight is putting some pressure on the position. So I'm thinking about now removing this knight. And how do we break through? This is a very close position. If black has a chance to win, how are we going to break through? So I was thinking about capturing this knight. I actually start thinking about either the knight capture or the rook capture, either one. And I started thinking about how my pawns, depending on how they capture, might go forward. I figured they could capture here, I go forward. And if they captured here, again, maybe I could go forward. Whoops, with the pawns. As I'm looking at this, though, I realized, hey, <laughs> guess what? The c4 pawn is actually pinned. This rook, not only is it safe in doing some work, it's actually pinning this pawn. Now I'm really determined to capture the knight. So I'm looking at this position, and I realize knight capture. They have to take back with the a pawn. They can't take back safely with the c pawn. And I get to take with my rook on the first rank, and they can't capture back. All right? Let's take a look. Boop, boop, boop because the c4 pawn is pinned and the queen is hanging. So I'm double attacking with this battery on the bishop and I figured maybe they may protect and I go forward and I really like black's position. I think it's winning. Uh, mostly because we're also got b2. So I like this and this is what I played. And guess what? Officially it was eh, wrong. <laughs> now the thinking I, it was correct and the ideas were correct. Um, and I actually maybe, you know, again, the computer says one thing, but we're humans. We're going to look for moves that we can understand and try to work with. We're not computers. But I actually might like my line a little bit better than what they offer, even though what they offer is very straightforward and winning. So the first move was correct. Make them make a choice. And since their C pawn is pinned, it has to be the A pawn. And then they have in Chess Kid, and Chess Kid's awesome, they have as the winning move the simple a4. Now we're attacking that bishop. If it backs up, we have our rook infiltrating, winning the bishop, and we're doing fantastic. But even after this type of move, I didn't see, I mean, I do see them winning the piece, and we have this passed pawn maybe, but I don't see it being necessarily a, a quick, easy win. It's going to take some work, and definitely, black is winning. But I definitely think, perhaps... I actually like rook takes on b5 a little bit better. So you can see what I was thinking, and you can see the answer they have. Again, pinned, going forward, we still have a4, and this battery is working together. It's not blocked by a pawn. I thought those were important. All right, this was a very interesting position, too. All right, let's get to the next one, number four. All right, this was another embarrassing one for me. And I don't mind showing the embarrassing ones. This happens to everyone, no matter who you are. And this time we're also going to pause it. It's wait to win. And let's do the pause right now real quick. All right, well, there's not a lot of material here. And white's actually down a pawn. But they do have the bishop for the knight, which can help. And also, black has an empty back rank. Uh, and so it's a weakness for the king. So the first move is pretty straightforward. We have check. I was thinking, though, after this check, which is what I played, and they have to play knight back, the whole idea is, can we pile on this pin? Can we get our dark squared bishop on this 
diagonal, and that would be winning. We win a piece, and once we're up a piece, it's pretty easy to get a pawn to the end. We support it, right? So now let's look. Well, if I play the bishop to e1, well, I can't get on this diagonal. It's protected, right? If I go to f2, now i got to get my king out of the way before I can get to c5. And the longer this goes on, they have one, two moves to get out of this pin, right? And get their king out of the way. They might even go this way, depending on the situation. But they have two moves, which means we have two moves to get on this diagonal properly. So one, no. What about over here? No. Then I was thinking, all right, well, I could go this way and I could reach e7. And the answer is no. They can again block it and it helps them because they're kinking it out of the pen. So now I'm realizing, well, I can't go to d6. Ah, and I can't pile on. All right, so maybe piling on the pin, maybe this is a chess kid tricky puzzle and it looks simple, but it's not. Let's see, what else can we do? Well, we can win this pawn, I thought. And by winning the pawn, maybe we have a winning advantage with the outside pass pawn. A little boring, but there you go. So I was thinking that it's on a dark square. We can put our bishop on c7. Rook will go to b5. Pretty much, we're going to get this pawn. But it takes a little work, and it's going to take a long game to win. So do we really just want to win one pawn? Well, if there's nothing else, yes, perhaps you can try to win. But the answer here is very simple, and we need to get in this diagonal and pile on the pin. But let's try it again. Can you guys find the correct move? Coach Aaron didn't. I did not. And this is embarrassing. Can you? <laughs> well, it's pretty straightforward. Right now, this rook is covering um, d6, right? Well, all we got to do is move our rook over to d8. And now our bishop's definitely getting d6. And we keep this pin also. They try to make space for the king. We play bishop here. And now we're winning. We're either going to get the exchange. They have to remove the bishop, perhaps. Or we have two things. And we're going to take the knight with check. And now we're up material. Pretty straightforward and very embarrassing for the coach. But it does happen. You can see how sometimes you're just not finding the correct move and you move on. I started thinking about capturing this pawn instead of really focusing on getting on this winning diagonal properly. All right, let's get to the fifth position. We're flying through these. I love it. All right, another very interesting position. Uh, not a lot of material, but still enough going on to make it very thoughtful. And it is black to move and win. So let's have you guys look first and see if you can figure out what move you would play. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So the first thing I do is I look for forcing moves, of course, for black. And you look at the differences. Well, black's down one pawn, and it's opposite color bishops. Both kings, perhaps, are not safe. So I'm looking for forcing moves, and I don't see an immediate check, but I do see queen going to c3, and we're threatening not one, but two different checkmates. Or queen going to h3, where we have one checkmate, but we also cut off the king trying to escape. Because if we went to queen to c3, perhaps they would try to start escaping. Um, but... That was my initial quick think. Where's some good moves for black? Where's forcing moves? But I didn't see checks, but I saw threatening checkmates. All right, with this windiness around the king and the dark squares. But then I started looking like I normally do. What is white's threat? We're not giving check. Does white have any threats or checks? Well, this is what happens when you're thinking. I've looked at the original position and I'm noticing, well, our rook's covering the sixth rank. So I wasn't really worried about the queen going to c6, just for example. Uh, I noticed that the queen was protecting the rook, but it's also protecting their bishop. Do they actually have a threat, though? That was the question. And I started looking and I saw, okay, well, what if they go for forward, right? f6 and they have a discovered check. Hmm. Well, let's say I jump to the side and now they have check. Clearing this diagonal for the queen, reaching a8, and either way, going to e8 or c8, we are doomed. Our king is doomed. So I started thinking, all right, is this their actual threat? And I said, well, they could go to f6, discover check, but there's a difference. This queen is protecting both the rook and the bishop. The difference being is I don't have to move the king. I can remove the attacker. So I figured rook capture. And if queen capture, well, I just take this rook. Nice. And also, I figured that after I capture, 
there weren't any other good moves for white, but I didn't double check. And what part didn't I double check? Well, f6 actually now blocks the rook from reaching c6. Huge. And I did not did not pay enough attention. Didn't double check about this threat. Because now, if we did take the A, we'd actually win the game with a forced checkmating sequence. Ouch. Embarrassing. All right. Part of the chess blindness and how we think is you look at a position and you already see a square cover. So the starting position, c6 is covered. Boom. So I'm not really thinking about it not being available later. And I also figured if I took here, rook takes and h3, I saved this whole problem because it's protecting the rook, this queen. So if they take the bishop, I'm already taking the rook and there is no check. And I realized if they take here too, I also had just a simple win. Check over here. So I figured this has to be the correct move. Rook just simply takes that bishop, even though it looks threatening. Are there any other moves after taking here? Well, yes, again, they have the simple check again. So this cannot be winning, but notice I didn't pay attention. But now the winning move. Now, if we look at a3 and c3, we can see a major thing about c3 which is really important and that is simply covering c6 so not only are we threatening one two checkmates but we're actually covering c6 and this is very very important so we have a double attack on the bishop we're covering c6 and we are threatening we're not one but two different spots for checkmate and we have some simple moves here for example if they try to run we could just pick up their king with a skewer i mean the queen with a skewer through the king so that's a pretty much one position. Um, and you can kind of see all it takes is a little double checking, a little understanding what your opponent's doing correctly. And C6, though it was covered, I stopped thinking about the square because it was covered. I did not realize by double checking this was the key spot in the position. I was thinking capturing over here had to be an easy win. Whoops, let's put the king correctly. So this is very typical in chess. It's not easy to double check everything, but in spicy positions, take another moment. Take an extra moment, perhaps. All right. So at the end of every one of my videos, I like to do a joke. And this was actually uh, for one of my chess students. This was from Ivan from PS11. Shout out to Ivan. And it was a very good chess joke. Bonus points for chess jokes. He sent it to me. And that is, how did the student win every game at a Saturday tournament? What's the secret? How did the student win every game at Saturday's tournament? Well, they prepared before. <laughs> so if you're a chess player, you get that joke. Hopefully you guys learned one or two uh, things from these puzzles from the chess kid. And have a great day. Be good. Chess Coach Aaron out. Peace.